Night shifters, ever witnessed a paranormal activity? If so, what was it? I used to intern in a recording studio in New York City years ago where it was technically open 24 over 7. Meaning there was always someone there, whether clients were in or not. Anyway, it was on an upper floor of a building and due to the amount of expensive equipment inside, you could not access that floor by elevator without someone letting you up. The button for that floor was locked out, so you couldn't press it from inside the elevator. There was a camera at the front entrance downstairs, another at the elevator entrance, and one inside the elevator. All of which could be viewed from the front desk of the studio so, when people arrived you would buzz them in. Wait until you saw them enter the elevator, and then you would have to push the button for the studio floor, to bring the elevator up. Well anyway, one of the nights I was working the overpass shift, and it was just me and another dude, doing cleaning, maintenance etc, when we hear the elevator start running at probably like 3.30 in the morning. The whole building is all offices so really there is nobody in the building past 5 to 6 pm besides us. So we thought it was a bit strange. The other guy looks at the cameras, and there's nothing at all. No one in the elevator either. So although it's weird, we just figure someone must still be in the building, and called it from a different floor. It made sense until all of a sudden we see it stop at our floor and we hear the door ding. We are both in the lobby about 15 feet away from the elevator and we give each other the hardest WTF stare ever. I can't explain how much I didn't want those doors to open. We stare like a deer in headlights completely motionless at the doors as they open. Nobody is there. No one pushed the button. Nothing. We both keep staring completely still and silent and it becomes really ducking creepy as time goes on and the doors don't shut. As if something is standing in doorway blocking the sensor. The doors usually close after 5 seconds or so. But we stared at it for a good 22-30 seconds or so before they closed. And the elevator returned back to the lobby. We stared for a bit longer before simultaneously looking at each other. And saying what the duck dude. Exclamation mark question mark. The next day we ask a couple of the other guys about it. And one of the guys said the same thing happened to him in the middle of the night when he was by himself. He said he almost shit himself. Maybe there's a logical explanation for it, elevator malfunction, etc, but it was really damn freaky, since the place was generally kinda creepy at night and there had been some other weird things. I work at a building where after midnight, it's oftentimes just me and my coworker. One night I was scheduled to go home at 3am, as I walk out of the office, and up to the elevators. The elevator dings and the door opens. These are elevators that stay either on the top floor or the ground floor. I'm on neither. I have no explanation for why it would just be there waiting for me to walk up to open. And I almost didn't even get on. But instead I just said you hh thank you. Please don't show yourself to me just in case. Lol. Imagine you then hear your welcome. From behind. I worked at a 7 over 11. One night I kept hearing what sounded like a little girl crying. But the store was completely empty. Whenever it go to the area where I thought it was coming from, I'd hear it from somewhere else. I hope somebody was messing with me, but I'm not sure. Did you happen to have coyotes in your area? They can sound like that. Although I imagine you have a lot of ambient noise from pop machines and coolers and possibly music playing overhead. So I'm not sure how you'd hear them. The coyotes in my area sound like dogs. I've never heard any that sound like crying. Cats though sound like crying. I don't have a story, but here is the one my wife likes to tell. She is a nurse, and for a couple of years she was working night shift in the palliative care unit, which is a comfort care slash end of life unit. Patients in that unit are expected to die, or to be sent home, or to a care home to die. Anyways, those rooms also had a radio, and according to her it happened a few times that a radio suddenly turned on. And within an hour or so a patient would pass on. One rather busy night. The radio turned on and my wife went into the room. Stared into the darkness and said cut that out. I don't have time for this shit. And the radio suddenly snapped off. No patient died during the rest of her shift. But one passed away shortly after she clocked out. I'm picturing death raising his bony hands up like jeez. Okay lady. I'll come back later. Why so rude? I just wanted to play some country music before the end of my shift. Jeez.
I don't inherently believe in ghosts, but if I had a paranormal story it will be this one. I work in one of the majorers in my city as a HCA. One of my many tasks is post-mortem care on patients who die in our care. One night at around 0200 I was called to the room of a older patient who was palliative had passed, and the family had finished their goodbyes. So I went in to start providing care. This usually means removing any tubes, wires, and monitors from the patient, giving them a bed bath, removing any valuables from the body to give to the family, putting them in a gown and shroud. I like to talk to my patients, even if they have passed as it puts me at ease and shows respect to them. I explain my actions and talk them through what I'm doing, because even though they have passed they are still my patient. While I was proceeding with the bed bath of the patient out of nowhere I felt like I was being watched and then I felt a hand on my shoulder and a man's voice tell me thank you. The hand remained for a moment while I stood there frozen then all the feelings stopped and the room felt empty. There were no other nurses or staff in the area at the time. Just me. I like to believe that the patient I was providing care for was thankful for my explanations and me continuing to talk to them through their care. Edit, thanks for the awards and the gold. Never expected my comment to get this far. This is oddly sweet. Just a small thank you for taking care of them before passing on. A lab building where I once worked was the site of murder-suicide, which happened while I was there. Awful and sad. We didn't have shifts per se, but I had to work late one night autoclaving equipment for the next day's experiment. The autoclave room is right next to the lab where the event took place. I hadn't seen anyone else in the building. After I started the load, I was about to leave the room when I heard a crash outside. I immediately opened the door and saw that all the contents of a table in the hallway had been pushed to the floor. Water bottles, a packet of papers, pens, etc. Since I was right by the door at the time, I would have seen and or heard someone running away. It was against protocol to leave things in the autoclave overnight. So I had to stay an hour and a half to get them out. But nothing else happened. I left the stuff on the floor. Though. Didn't want a repeat of that. Hate to look like an idiot. But what is autoclaving? It's a method of sterilizing lab equipment by basically putting it in a super hot oven for a prolonged period of time. It's useful in microbiology labs. Night watch in the barracks at Fort Gordon. That's a night shift. Right? Anyway. So many things happened in three different rooms that I could write a book. It completely changed my belief in paranormal activity. This one took place in the middle of the night so this is the one I'll tell. I'm sitting by the stairwell on the second floor and hear someone shouting in a room down a hallway. I'm on duty, so I run to the room and swing open the door expecting to see some fighting. There are several people in this room pointing up to the ceiling next to a wall and telling me they're doing it again. I ask them to explain, and they tell me that ever since they moved into that room someone lifts up the ceiling tiles and makes funny faces at them at night. The latrine is on the other side of the wall, so I go over to see if anyone is there and there isn't. So I climb onto a desk in the room to lift up the ceiling tiles to see if they are still up there. When I lift up the ceiling tiles all I see is a cinder block wall that goes all the way to the floor above. There's only about an inch between the back of the ceiling tile and the wall. No way a face was there. Two of the soldiers freaked out and ran out of the room and slept in the hallway. This was only the first of many incidents. Is there any chance you'd like to share more of your stories? This one really caught my attention. Here is another that I witnessed, but it was during the day. I hear a ruckus in the new guy's room, so I run on over. I arrive to see a rather large guy slam a wall locker against the wall. He then starts apologizing saying that he didn't mean to hurt whoever was behind the locker. Except there was nobody behind the locker. The ruckus began when the wall locker began to shake and move off the wall. The assumption was that someone was behind it playing a joke by pushing it forward. This made everyone really uneasy, and while I was in the room looking at the locker I could hear what sounded like slow scratching of metal coming from inside the locker. The person this locker was assigned to opened it, so we could check it out and there was nothing in there that seemed like it could make the noise. The noise didn't happen while the locker was opened either. As soon as the locker was closed you could hear the sound again. I checked back a couple times throughout the day and the noise was still there. 
I used to work at a 24 hour subway. I know. Great start to a paranormal experience story. Ha. Huh. Close bracket. Well one day I was doing the dishes. And my coworker was cleaning the toaster oven and bread oven. Out of nowhere. Around 3.30 am. I heard our door chime go off. Out of habit I say welcome to subway as I turn the corner. Nobody there. Kawaka gone. I thought okay. Maybe he hopped the counter and went for a cigarette outside as he did from time to time. Heading back to the sink to finish the dishes. I hear the door chime again. Nobody. Check the bathrooms. Nobody. What? The? Hell. I ignore the dishes. And stand at the front counter. Eyeing the doors. Couple minutes. Later. My coworker comes through the back door where we get our deliveries. Where'd you go? I asked him. Turning towards the back door area to take out the trash. He replies. Door chime. He does the same thing as me. Welcome to Subway. Turns corner to see nobody there, but this time the door was wide open. Our doors are weighted to where they'll close on their own if you let go of them. Door stayed open for a couple minutes as we stared. Then suddenly slammed. Not a windy night. And our doors wouldn't even stay open like that on the windiest of days. Have no idea what caused this. Or why it happened on that particular night. But after I got a different job I was told it never happened again. Told my boss about the incident. And we all looked at the cameras. Nobody could explain it. Edit. Typo. Obviously it was a socially awkward ghost that wanted a sandwich. But couldn't work up the courage to order one. The hash slinging slasher. Worked at a movie theater running the booths upstairs. The projectors are upstairs. Obviously, in a long corridor. At night. After the last showing in each theater. You shut off the lights too. That theater and the small one over the projector itself. Then you cover the platters to protect from dust. It's not so bad the first few. Because at least the lights of nearby projectors are still on for the theaters. That are still running. But, as you should each one off one by one. The corridor gets darker and darker and that little viewing window into each individual theater is pitch black. That dull, steady whirring noise you've toned out all night is gone and is now replaced by absolute silence and there's hardly any light left anymore. Just the lights at the end of each corridor where you sit in between each start time. It's spooky enough is what I'm saying. But one particular night. I'm throwing the covers over one of the platters and I casually glance up into the viewing theater window across the way. And there's a face. It's a little boy's face. And it's sheet white. I know what I saw. I'm sure there's an explanation for it. And there's nothing supernatural about it. But there was a face there. And it scared the absolute shit out of me. It made an already unsettling environment that much more terrifying the rest of the time I worked there. Also for the record. Inside the actual theater. These windows are a solid 8 to 10 feet above the seat backs in the highest row. So, if someone was playing a prank, they'd need a ladder and even then they'd have nowhere to set it. I used to work as a late night janitor for a movie theater. I've heard talking slash whispering in theaters. Cleaning theaters you would see people out of the corner of your eye sitting in the seats. My old boss worked at an old location where some of the projector rooms were at the end of an extremely long hallway with basically no lighting at the end, so it would get progressively darker as you walked down it. He said you would feel like you were being watched the entire time, and that it would get worse the closer to the end you got, like if someone was standing at the end of the hallway staring at you as you walked towards them. The theater I worked at was split into two halves with one dark hallway on each side and a bright hallway in the middle. There was a hallway that cut across and connected all three of these. Many of the staff reported being alone and seeing a person cross the threshold of the dark hallway on the opposite side. Lights would turn off and on on their own. Each of the theaters has its own small emergency exit hallway. If anyone opens the door it sets off the alarm. I've seen people walk around the corner into one of these and followed them to tell them they need to leave only to find an empty hallway. We've also had the alarms go off on their own multiple times. The worst are the real people though. Imagine having your back to a massive pitch black glass window vacuuming at 4 to 5 am, only to hear a loud pounding against the glass behind you. You turn around to see a face staring at you right behind the glass. It turns out to be someone who forgot their phone or something, and decided they needed to get it in the middle of the night instead of waiting until morning. 
Sometimes we would leave life-sized cardboard standees in the emergency exit hallways to duck with the other cleaners. Imagine turning a blind corner to find Mr. Bean staring right in front of you. Every last one of these is my nightmare. Not me but a friend used to work as a night custodian for an elementary school, which the building itself was rather old, built in the 40s maybe, close bracket. He was the third shift guy, so he took over from the second shift guy at like 9pm. He was basically there to mop the floors and make sure no one broke in. If he got all of his stuff done, he was pretty much free to do whatever he wanted. Often after he finished doing his work, he'd go hang out in an office because there was a small TV to watch. He said things started off innocently enough. Lights turning on in classrooms where he knew they had been off previously cabinets and doors opening and closing on their own. He didn't pay much attention to it at first. He was sort of on the fence as to where he believed in paranormal activities, so he just shrugged it off as coincidences. At first, he would go and check the noises out. Sometimes he'd creep around and try to catch someone in the act, in case there was a way in that he didn't know about. After a month or so, he gave up looking and just learned to ignore it. He'd ask his boss about it and just get blown off. Over the coming months, things progressively got worse. Doors no longer closed on their own. They slammed shut. He heard noises like children playing. Sometimes screaming. He'd find trash cans turned upside down. He'd have things thrown at him, but he would be clearly alone with nowhere for someone to hide and throw things at him. He'd contemplated quitting but he was making good money for being nearly fresh out of high school and he needed the money for family stuff, so he stuck with it. He'd come in, rush through his duties for the night as quickly as he could, and then go and sit in the office, where he'd turn the TV to where he could sit facing the door and that's where he'd sit until the morning crew came in at 6am. He didn't want to admit that he was scared shitless of being in that school by himself at night so he tried to tough it out and made a lot of excuses to try and explain what was going on. The last straw for him was the night he was sitting in the office watching TV and felt someone grab the chair from behind and flip him over backward. There was clearly no one in the room and no way for anyone to get into the room without him seeing them. He picked up the office phone and called his boss at home in the middle of the night. Said he quit and he'd come back in the morning to turn his keys in. He was definitely a believer in the paranormal after that experience. He said that it wasn't until years later that he found out from someone who'd researched the history of the school before it was torn down that there used to be a pool inside the school. A number of kids had drowned in over the early years of the school until the administration decided to finally expand the building, so they filled the pool in with concrete and expand over top of it. I'm a teacher and there is something so unsettling about empty schools. Even just in the hours before slash after classes or during breaks. I can't imagine how creepy it would be at night. I'm a cleaner in a high school that was built in the early 1900s. The story is there was a old janitor that was down in the basement fixing the boiler. He had a massive heart attack and died still holding his wrench. Every time I go into the basement, out of the corner of my eye I can see a old man laying in front of that boiler. I constantly feel watched especially on the third floor, which was his area to clean. The lights will turn on and windows will be opened when I know I shut them. It's not bad till 9pm when it gets dark though. Not night shift, just a regular dude, and I don't really believe in the paranormal. But I had this one thing happen that I have zero explanation for. I've also told this story on Reddit before. I was a teenager studying for major secondary school exams. So one weekend, my parents, brother and grandparents went to a function and I was home alone. For reference, because of the country I live in, our house has steel grills in front of every door and window, like a prison. My room is at the front of the house. It's something like 9.30 or 10 p.m. I head to the kitchen which is at the opposite end of the house. It also houses the stairs to the second floor which is where my parents and brother's rooms are, as I'm getting something from the fridge. I hear my mom yell my name. So I say coming, and start up the steps. Two steps up. I remember that that makes no ducking sense, because I'm home alone. I call out to whatever, and I hear my name again. Fuck that's so hard. I don't generally run, but I sprinted back to my room, and locked the door. 
After a couple minutes, when I think I've lost my mind and was hearing things, I decided to head back to the kitchen. As I get to my door and unlock it, as if on cue, I hear footsteps in the passageway, again. Duck that, relock the door, grab something of my desk to defend myself, and hide under my bed. Footsteps stop at my door. Waited for damn near half an hour under the bed until my parents called to say they were almost home. Went to open up the place so they could get in and nothing was unlocked or broken so it sure as hell wasn't a person. It's roughly 12 or so years later and I still have no clue what went on that night. This is the creepiest story on here bud. Right. That or the cop one in the attic. Who off? I work the front gate at a military installation. The night shift is super dull and quiet where I'm at. For a while I noticed this dark green old Ford Bronco that would roll up. When I would stand out the gate shack, the car would do a 180 and leave. This happened about 2-3 two to three times until I finally caught the license plate before it turned. I ran the numbers to my supervisor. He asked me if I was sure. I said I'm 100% certain. He tells me it couldn't be because the numbers led to a vehicle crash report that involved the exact same vehicle and plate number to which the driver had died and the vehicle and the vehicle was totaled. That shit made me want to switch to days. That makes me want to go out and buy old cars matching old accident reports and a lettering press. Except that would probably not be the smartest slash most reverent idea lol. You have to choose a victim that might have some ties to the accident. Not too close. But close enough it might resonate with them. Then start dressing up as the deceased person in the accident and occasionally appear outside their windows. Place wireless speakers in their walls and pump some spooky sounds through it. Make a key to their house and move things around when they are not there. Finally when they are on the edge just stop doing anything. And that's how I won my court case. I worked in a mine in northern Ontario. There was a death on the 4200 level a couple years previous to the incident. It was a normal day underground like any other. We were rehabbing a rolled working that had collapsed. 4200 level was big. The drifts were 66 feet. But go on 4 kilometers in every direction. It was about midnight when we saw the mine rescue team with security rushing down the drift. Naturally we dropped what we were doing and followed to see if we could help. We arrived to a guy who was as pale as a ghost. He didn't look hurt. But he was shaking uncontrollably. Mine rescue approached him. And he wouldn't have it. He would scream. And not just any scream. It was terrifying hearing the screams. Like a person so consumed with fear. It had a tone to it that you wouldn't imagine could come from a person. Eventually he just stopped screaming. And just sat there. Awake but non-responsive. By now it was 3.30 am and our shift was over. We couldn't leave him down there. We managed to get him on a stretcher that we could carry out. On our way out he kept saying the devil is on 42. Over and over again. About two years later. Another incident report was read to us. The exact same thing. Exactly the same spot. But a different person. I don't believe they saw the devil. But it is always in the back of my mind. When I'm on 42. What happened to the guy? He still works there. He used to be with the sanitation department cleans the porta potties, but now he's on the rock breaker. He refuses to work on 4200 anymore. The other guy quit and went to another mine. Used to work at IHOP. A cook before my time got shot and died during robbery. I would always hear someone in the kitchen such as the spatulas clanking but nobody would be in the kitchen. Once I saw black figure in the back figured it was the cook. When I went outside to the front of the restaurant, the cook was sitting outside smoking. There was no current orders either. Other cowalkers experienced some stories. One of them said she felt pushed, but I can't speak on what I didn't see. Man I would be pissed and haunt people too if I ended up dying at a ducking I hop. Right? Imagine you have to spend eternity haunting a grimy restaurant kitchen. When a patient buzzed and asked me to ask the person behind the curtain to go away. FYI it was dark and everyone was in their beds. We used to have patients call out and ask why did that man just come in here, stare at me, and then leave? Question mark? The worst was the slash ox for old lady complaining that a man had come in and sat down in her bedside chair and wouldn't leave. The people that called out after seeing this guy had a tendency to code the next shift. 
We had something similar at the very first place I worked at as a CNA. It was an old hospital turned into a skilled rehab slash LTC. Traumatic brain injury rehab. People would usually tell us that they saw a little blonde girl in a yellow dress come into their room. After they saw her it would normally be a couple days and they would code. I was working at a gas station at like 3am one night. A car pulled into the pump. Guy got out and started pumping. And then the car and you just vanished. I was looking right at it. And it just popped out of existence. I told my boss the next day and she turned white as a sheet. She'd seen the same thing. Same exact description. Same car. Same pump. Same guy. What a shitty way to spend the afterlife. Just eternally running on empty. Once you're about to hook it up to pump some gas. Poof. I work night shift at a hotel. I also had a day job and the manager was cool and said I could sleep as long as I woke up if someone needed something. One night, I woke up and saw a guy, well, more of a silhouette of a guy, staring at me through the windows of the Dutch door to the courtyard. He was really tall, 6, 5 feet, and had a black duster slash trench coat and hat. I jumped up from the couch, put down the remote I had fallen asleep with in my hand, and rushed to the door to see what he needed. He was gone. And no sign of him anywhere in the courtyard and there were only two long, straight paths. He couldn't even have ran that fast. I forget about it and continue my night. Fast forward about three weeks and my coworker is telling me about an evil spirit that lives in one of the rooms. All the employees knew there were at least four haunted rooms there, as well as the elevator. No. Seriously. He started describing a tall shadowy guy. I cut him off and say like 6 or 7 feet. Black coat and hat? Apostrophe. He turns white and stares at me. You've seen it too? Exclamation mark. Apostrophe. I tell him what happened. And that innocent incident that night all of a sudden got super creepy. Another time. At another job. I was getting ready to do security rounds. Roughly around 3.15 am. I'm whistling the Arthur movie theme song. It had just played on the radio. It was dead quiet except just crickets. As I opened the door to the patrol car. Still whistling. I hear a whistle off in the bushes. The bushes on a 60 foot cliff. It's the same tune. In the same type of whistle I have. I don't whistle normal. It's like a windier. Not sharp kind of whistle. And much quieter. Same exact song. Same exact type of whistle. I immediately stop. The whistling keeps going. I get into the car and book it. Take about 20 minutes longer than I normally do to get back, and I'm super careful slash nervous slash paranoid when I get back. Never saw anyone or anything. Never heard it again. But on that note, sometimes if I fell asleep at that job, I'd wake up to the sound of my old boss shouting my name. He used to come in about the same time that I would hear the sound and wake up. That happened pretty regularly. The weird thing is that he had been dead for 3 years when it started. Even in the afterlife he does not tolerate employees who sleep. Not a night shift here, but my dad kind of was. He was also against the idea of paranormal activity, but now agrees that sometimes there are things that cannot be explained. He was a college student working towards his doctorate in dentistry. However, due to school being expensive as hell, he had to live in a rundown apartment in the, the bad side of Philly. As a result, he would occasionally wake up at night since he had to scare off several attempted home invaders. Therefore he was a light sleeper, and any kind of noise would instantly wake him up and make him do rounds around the apartment to make sure there were no intruders. After the second or third break in the gangs, learned to stay away from the apartment due to his reputation of becoming Rambo to fight them off. He and his roommate had an old, really freaking old, fridge that had a light that did not work and came with the purchase. This is important to the story. The apartment building was also built in the 1960s, but had been converted to a sort of loft house with only one apartment room available for rent. Rumored and him split it into two living quarters, with a tiny kitchen, bathroom, a basement, and a bed front door with broken glass. The kitchen was directly next to the bedroom and the walls were paper thin. One night, he heard someone moving around in the kitchen. Of course, he snatched up his hunting knife and investigated. The fridge door was open, and the light was on. 
An old woman wrapped in a shawl was bent over examining the contents. My dad yelled hey. She turned. And snap. The light went off. She vanished. And the door of the fridge suddenly slammed shut. To this day he has no clue who she was, or what she was. She was hungry. Who knows. Can ghosts get hungry? I was firmly against the idea of paranormal activity prior to working in an old folks home. You always felt watched. Always. Even when not in view of the camera. But that was the tip of the iceberg. Several times while I was working, things would fly off the walls, even though it was unprovoked. Him talking hand sanitizer containers that flew 15 feet from the wall it was on. Cups that were stationary on the counter and all of a sudden flew across the room. And clipboards that just happened to all fall off the walls at once. Even though they were across the room from each other, nothing is as unsettling as Bill in 209. Bill lived in this room while he was a tenant. While someone was visiting, they stayed in room 209. The visitor came downstairs, said that Bill had come into his room, and said don't worry it's just Bill, while he was in the shower, and then asked who Bill was. We explained that there was no one who lived or worked there named Bill. A couple days later, the same visitor was cleaning out records for the care center, where they worked. As they were doing so, they found that a resident named Bill had lived in room 209. When they told us this story, we all heard a knock on the window and turned to look at it. As we did so, clipboards and bulletin boards flew off the wall on the opposite wall. We've decided that Bill is friendly, but likes attention. He's cool. When they told us this story, we all heard a knock on the window and turned to look at it. As we did so, clipboards and bulletin boards flew off the wall on the opposite wall. Classic Bill. You right. You right. Repossessing cars. It's about 2.30 a.m. Me and a buddy in the same car. Corner of Route 70 and 571 in Lakewood NJ. A 97 to 98 Honda CRV pulls up in the left turn lane. She had no face. Like no face from that bad 90s penis Tressy movie. A friend of mine was goaded by her husband into telling this story at a gathering once. She absolutely hated the experience and loathed being reminded about it. She and her husband were staying in a really ordinary, 1990s dash built hotel on a road trip. She decided to check out the vending machines. So she took some change and headed down the hallway. She got towards the end. Weather. Ice and vending machines were at an intersection. And there's this guy just standing there off to the side. He's kind of moving in a weird way. Like the exaggerated breathing movement some video game NPC characters do. But otherwise nothing. She felt a little weird that this guy is just standing at this area and not moving as she's approaching, but thought if anything happens, it'll scream. She keeps an eye on him as she keeps heading towards the area and realizes when she can see past the edge of the wall and the sign that he doesn't have a face. Where his face should be, there is only blackness. Not the color black, just blackness. We asked her what happened and she said she didn't scream. She froze and stared, and then just took off running faster than she ever had in her life. In a massive panic. Back towards the room. Her husband went down the hall to see the dude, and seemed disappointed that he didn't. He seemed to find it all really fascinating, and that really upset her, since it shook her up really bad. I work on a boys unit at a mental hospital. Recently my patients have been complaining about seeing ghosts in their rooms at night. Claiming thieves seen things, coloring pages and art thieves taped up, fly off the walls. Doors open and close by themselves. And a few patients have claimed to see full body apparitions. Given their age and psych status, I'd usually take their stories with a grain of salt. But actually I sort of believe them. The hospital opened as an asylum in the mid 1800s. And patients have definitely died there. Much of the original building is still used, including my unit. And honestly. When I walk around the halls at night, hours after the patients have fallen asleep, it legitimately does feel like someone is always watching me. I think it's just a matter of time until I have my own ghostly encounter. I had a college classmate who used to be a psych nurse in a former life. She said she was skeptical about the claims patients made, especially when they said they were talking to God. But she said after several years she decided, who am I judge if they are talking to God? She didn't explain what changed her mind. Talking to patients with severe psychosis is a real mind flip. 
especially the ones with super disorganized thought processes. Spending a few hours chatting about nonsense with one of them will really hurt your brain and get you worried about what is and isn't real.